Welcome to this tutorial. I'm going to show you how to use the PDE toolbox from MATLAB to solve some differential equations applicable for transport problems. So first, in order to run the PDE toolbox, you can either open it from the apps button in the PDE folder or call it through the command line using the PDE tool command. And here you have several options that you can use. So the first option is the gen uh, generic scalar, where you will have only one PD, uh, one PD. And then you can also have several other options that are optimized for heat transfer, diffusion, and other ones that we are not going to use in this course. In case that you have more than one PDE equation, you can use a generic system. And in this generic system, it allows you to input up to two variables. So if we click on the PDE button, we can see the variables. And here we will have several coefficients. And we can use uh, this generic system for elliptic, and parabolic, and eigen modes. Also, uh, hyperbolic problems, although in our class, we are not going to focus on hyperbolic problems. Most of our problems are going to be either parabolic if they are time dependent because they include the derivative of time and elliptical problems. So starting with a generic scalar problem or one uh, heat transfer diffusion. Heat transfer diffusion models is basically the same PD just with the right names for the variables so it's easy to understand. So let's look at the problem from the the pre previous class where we have a rectangular uh, plate where we have different temperatures at each side. So first of all what we are going to do is start by drawing the geometry. So we are going to click on the draw drawing mode. We have several options for drawing so we can create a rectangle uh, either from a corner or from the center and also an ellipse from the corner or the center or we can just create a random polygon. So we are just going to use a square and we are going to make a square. Now we can modify the dimensions by placing the different positions. So let's put that, uh, place the rectangle starting at minus, minus 0 0.5 and minus 0 0.5 and then with two of width and one height. And the name of the object is going to be R1. This name is going to be important in case we have complex geometries where we can add or sum different geometries. So we can change the, the different field of view by changing the axis limits. So in our case, it's going to be 2.5. Or we can just set to default so we are gonna have the whole area but it's always nice to have some extra space for visually see the, the geometry so now the next step in our problem is to define the boundary conditions we have defined a heat transfer problem so we have two kinds of uh, boundary conditions. We can have either a uh, Dirichlet condition where we define the temperature value. So in this case, we would define the weight factor of the temperature and we will provide the temperature. Or we could also define a derivative of the temperature at the boundary, which would uh, correspond to the heat flux in this problem and the heat transfer coefficient. For the problem that we are going to look at, just a simple one where we define the, pro uh, the temperatures at each uh, side of the rectangle. So we, let's start by placing 100 degrees here, 200, 300, and 400 degrees. So, and this one is 100. So now what we are going to do is input the values for the PDE. So the coefficients for the PDE that we are going to use in this case is, uh, are going to be unit values 
we can modify those to if we know the heat of conduction, heat source, so and all the other parameters. In our case, we are going to define the heat source as zero, so we don't have external heat coming into the system. We don't have any external temperature outside the system that we want to correct, that would account for this term here. So the only parameter that we actually have is the coefficient of heat conduction. We are using a steady state, so elliptical system. If we would uh, want to solve for uh, and steady state, we would use a parabolic system, but this is not our case. So let's start with this simple uh, example. So now the next step is to initialize the mesh. So we click on this triangular button. And this mesh is pretty coarse, so we want to refine it and in order to get better approximate solution. So we are going to click a couple of times. and the number of grid points that you need is going to depend on the accuracy that you need for the problem and also the kind of problem that you are setting. Uh, going to do fine, fine grid for a problem like this, it's going to be an overkill. So a grid like this would work pretty fine. It's also considered that the computation will scale with the grid size. So the smaller the grid, the faster it runs the higher number of grid points it will take longer to solve so now in order to solve we just click this button it's going to solve the PD solution is computed so now we are going to see the the temperature profile and we can modify the plot configuration by clicking at this icon here so we can change the color map to jet for instance so we can see the temperature much nicer uh, distribution so you can see the hot plate hot area the cold area and the intermediate areas of temperature if we would have more than one variable you could uh, plot other parameters so here you could plot the temperature gradient which would be the derivative of the variable the heat flux etc you can also add the contour to the plot so you can see where the temperatures are the same as you can see now you can plot it in 3d so you can see the the heat distribution on a 3d plot and this would be the 3d plot that we have with the temperatures that we define at each edge not that there is some edge effects due to the non-continuous temperatures at the at the edges where we set two boundary conditions, but you can see that the temperature is increasing by 100 degrees at its position. So this would be the most easy and the easiest example of the PDE toolbox. And from here, you can start building con on the other problems by using generic scalar or generic vectors. Thank you. Wow.